A multi-step form, also known as a wizard, is a way to split up a large form into multiple pages full of fields, which the user can then navigate through and then complete the form. Now, I'm usually not a fan of this kind of approach. I usually prefer one page full of fields or for it to be um, split up into separate resources entirely in separate models. But there are some good use of cases for a multi-step form, such as a tax return, for example, which requires a lot of user input and branching of steps, which makes sense for a multi-page form. Now, a good multi-step form is one which remembers the user's input and allows them to go back and forth through the various pages. Now, if you're just wanting to break up the form to simplify the user interface, then you may want to just go with JavaScript. And the way this works is it's just a single form with all the fields inside of it, and then JavaScript is used to show and hide the fields as they page through the various sections. And this is what is happening in this specific example here. But if you need something more dynamic and server-side oriented, then you'll want to go through Rails itself. And that's what I want to show in this episode. So what I have here is a store application, and I want to add a checkout process to this store, which will require a multi-step form. And so first they'll fill out their shipping information, then their billing information, and then finally on the third step, they'll just check over review the order and then confirm it. So it's a multi-step form here with three steps. Now we don't really have an order model yet, so I can just generate one uh, with my nifty scaffold generator. By the way, this is um, a Rails 2 application here, so uh, for this, to demonstrate this, I don't really need many attributes on here, but you normally would have a lot. So we'll just say shipping name is a string, the billing name is a string, and then um, for the controller actions, we'll just have index, show, and new. And then migrate our database. So here's what that generated scaffolding looks like. You can see this is the index action for the orders. I can click new order, and now I can enter in the shipping and billing information for that order all in a single form. But I want to split this up into multiple steps. Now the first thing I want to do is go into our new orders form view and split up each of these steps that I want to have into their own little partial. And so uh, first I'll just add a little title for each section here. So we'll have a shipping information step where they, fit, where they fill out all their shipping info. We have a billing information. And then finally we have a confirmation page where it'll just display the shipping and billing name to the user and ask them to confirm it. So for each of these separate steps, let's move it into its own partial. So I'll just use a little TextMate shortcut here for a shipping step, partial, a billing step, and then finally, a confirmation step. And you can see this just made a separate partials file inside the orders views directory for each of the steps. Now our order model will have the knowledge of what the current step is, either shipping, billing, or confirmation, so we can use that information to dynamically change what partial is rendered here. So um, let's change this so that it displays the um, orders current step partial. So this will either be uh, shipping, billing, or confirmation and render that step dynamically. Next we need to change our order model so it knows about these steps and manages which one is current. Now, some prefer to use a state machine plugin for doing this. Um, in this case, in this episode, I'm just going to do it from scratch because it's really not that complicated. It's not too much code, and it really allows us to customize it to fit our needs. Now, what I like to do is add a steps method in here and then just return an array of steps listed in the proper order. So in this case, it's shipping, billing, and confirmation. And this can really be any list you want, and it can be completely dynamic and change depending on the attributes of the model. So in this case, if the line items that it's ordering are not for shipping, maybe they're just for download, you can skip the shipping step, or maybe add a billing step for different payment options and so on. Now we want a way to set the current step. So we can make a writer here called current step, and then we'll make an accessor method with the same name and either default to what's specified by the writer or um, default to the first step in the list. So in this case, it'll be shipping. Now, if we reload our new order form here, uh, we will get an error because I forgot to pass in our F variable into our partial. We can fix this back inside our form view. Here I'm rendering the partial and I'm not passing in that local variable. So I'll say locals um, F is F. And there's actually a more concise way of doing this if you just don't pass in the partial hash option. You can just render partials this way and pass in the locals after that. 
Now when we reload this page, we, you see it renders a shipping partial because that is the first step. Now if we click Submit now, it would just create the order, but we don't want that. We want it to render the next billing partial. So we'll need to change the way this behavior works inside of our controller. Uh, now I've seen several different techniques on how you can go about doing this. Um, I've seen people create a separate controller action for each of the individual steps in the form. I've also seen others use the edit and update actions for the separate steps and just use the create action for the initial step, which means you have a model in the database which is only partially completed if the user doesn't go through all the steps. In this specific episode, I'm just going to handle everything inside the new and create actions and keep all the session information, all the current order um, information that the user builds up inside of a session. Now there are some downsides to this approach, but I'll kind of go through those and offer alternatives as we go about. For now though, let's just do the simplest thing that can possibly work, and that is to change this create action so that it doesn't actually save the order yet. Um, let's just add a method on order called next step, which will change the current step to the next one. And then um, let's just render out the new order form template again. So inside of our order model, let's just make a new method called next step. And then in here, we'll set the current step to be the next one. So we'll just get the steps array, um, and then we'll call the current step. Actually, we'll get the index of the current step, and then just call uh, plus one on that. So that'll grab the next step in the array. So if we go back to our form and click submit on this page, it now goes to the next step, which is the billing information. If we click submit again, it still takes us to the billing information because our current step is not being recorded. So we need to add some state to this. And this, I'll just use a session here. So we'll set our order step to be the current order step. And then we'll set our step at the beginning. So our current step will be the session's order step. There we go. So now if we try it out, we're at the shipping page, it goes to the billing page, and then it goes to the confirmation page, and it actually happens to wrap around because it sets it to a nil value, and which defaults to the first one. Now we need a way to get to the previous page too. So instead of our form, let's change this button to be continue, and then let's also add a back button here. And I'm going to add a name here, which will allow us to track if this back button is pressed. Let's call it back button. So inside of our orders controller, we can see if this back button is pressed. If it is, then we'll go to the previous step. Otherwise, we'll stick to the next step. And that previous step method inside of our order model will be nearly identical to the next step. We'll just call it previous step. And then it'll just subtract one instead of adding one. So now when we go to the new order page, we now have continue and back buttons, which takes us to the next and previous steps accordingly. Now we'll want to remove this back button on the first page. So let's do that. So going to our order form here, let's hide this back button so we'll only show it unless the order is on the first step here. And so we'll need to add that first step order method. We'll just check if the current step is equal to the first step. Go to our new order page and bam, our back button's gone. Now our form has a little problem. It's suffering from short-term memory loss. If we try to enter some information in, click continue, go back, well, you can see it's disappeared. It's not remembering our state or any information that we enter in. Now we can again solve this by storing that information inside of a session. Now I don't recommend storing complex model objects inside of sessions, but simple objects like hashes, arrays, and strings are fine. So let's create a new session variable here called um, order params, and then we'll just default it to a blank hash. And then we can use this inside of our create action here. So we can say, our session order params hash. Um, let's do a deep merge on this, just in case we have some deep nesting. And then we'll just deep, nerd, deep merge the order parameters hash. And then we can just use this inside of our, um, when we're building up our new order here. Now there is one more fix. I only wanna do that merging if the order parameter is already set. So just in case that parameter is not set, we don't get any errors. So now when we go to our new order page, we can enter in some information to the shipping name, the billing name, and that information is going to be carried across to all of the pages and remembered. Now it would be nice when going back to the new order page that that information would be remembered that the current step that they were on would be remembered so that it takes them to that same location. We can accomplish that really easily by just copying these two lines here where we're setting our new order. 
up into the new action, so that way the session information will apply to that as well. So now when we reload our new order page here, our information is applied and it would just take us to the step that we were on. Now let's make this form fully functional by saving the order when it is complete and the last step is finished. So if we are on our create action and it's not pressing the back button, so we're going to the next step, what we want to do is see if we're on the last step. So order.laststep, we'll make this method. And then um, if it is on the last step, we'll just save the order. And then if we have saved the order, then we'll want to change the rendering behavior. So uh, we'll just say if it's a new record, then we'll render that new action. Otherwise, we'll just uh, redirect to, uh, how about our just order show page, and we'll set a flash notice saying that order saved. And our last step method in our order model is very similar to the first step. We'll just change a couple words, and there we go. Now let's give this all a try by filling out our shipping information, our billing information, and then submitting the form when we confirmed it, and now we've saved our order with the proper name, shipping, and billing. Now if we try to create a new order, notice that we are on that same step and it has our same information on it. So we need to change this so that it doesn't remember it when we've completed the order. And we could do that by simply resetting our session information before we redirect it. So set our session order step and our session order params to nil. There we go. Now the last thing I want to cover here is validations. So let's say we have a validates presence of in our order model um, for the shipping name attribute. And I only want this validation to show up uh, when they're completing the shipping step in the form. So uh, what I can do is add a little if condition here to say uh, if the order model, if the current step on that order model is equal to the shipping step. And if it is, then it will handle the shipping name validation. And the same goes for, let's say, billing name and so on. And it can just be applied to any one of the steps in the process. And now to get this working in the controller is pretty easy. We only want to change our step if the order is valid. So we can say order valid, and then it will only go to the previous or next step. There we go. So we can try this out by entering a blank shipping name and then we get only that error message validation, fill that in, continue, blank billing name, we get an error message, and so on. So it looks like it's working. Now just a couple more points about the validations here. Um, one thing, if you want to keep these validations a bit cleaner, you can move this Lambda information out into a method, such as if shipping, and that way um, it just keeps things a lot cleaner, and the current step check only happens inside that method name. Another thing about validations is that uh, it's often useful to have one method which validates all the steps at one time, such as, uh, let's make a new method here called all valid, and that can just loop through all the steps and make sure that they're all valid. So we'll just say for each step, let's change our current step, and then we'll just see if that step is valid. And this way, um, if you ever do any changes in the validations or uh, the way the steps work, you can ensure that no steps were invalidated in the process. So this is really useful inside the controller here. Before saving the order, we can just say if order all valid, and that'll loop through all of these steps and ensure that each one of them is valid and hasn't been invalidated during the process of filling out the form. And the really neat thing about this is that it changes the current step it's on. So this means that going back here, if one of the steps is invalid, that will become the current step which will mean that is what is rendered out. So it shows the, users, shows the user the invalid step. Well, that's it for this episode on multi-step forms. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that we are storing the user order parameters inside of a session, which means that if the user has multiple windows or tabs open, they're going to rely on that same session information. So if you want it to be uh, more separate, uh, you might consider storing the order parameters in the database and saving the order model early and using the update actions to change the various steps, or storing the order parameters in hidden fields inside the form. Now I just found this technique to be the simplest approach and it works well for most of the time, but um, just some alternative options you have available there. 
Finally, and I do admit that this create action is rather complicated and long, a lot more than I want a method to be, so that would probably need some kind of refactoring. Uh, I'll consider doing an episode on refactoring this method in the future. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.